Hello friends, we are back with another video. Today we're going to give you some tips and tricks on how you can start a Poshmark business, grow a Poshmark business, and get more sales on Poshmark. Um, first, I wanted to take time to thank all of you guys. Um, you guys are so awesome. Your support on Poshmark has been just overwhelming and the messages and the love that we get on Poshmark from you guys about our merchandise and how much you love it it makes us feel so good and we are so happy that we can provide you guys with merchandise that you can resell and make money so um thank you guys so much um but today i have a few things i want to go over with you guys that can hopefully help you um i want to talk first about poshmark facebook groups okay poshmark facebook groups can be really good you can learn a lot of stuff from them i'm a part of them and um, I see a lot of bad stuff going on in these groups a lot of times, though. Um, not only is there a lot of negativity, but there is also a lot of bad information being given in these groups. So I want to touch on some of that today. Now, I would say before you take advice from someone on these groups, look at their sales history on Poshmark and see how much inventory they're moving. How many sales are they getting? Okay, because... Sometimes when I look in their closet, they may be selling one item a week, but they're on these groups like giving out all this advice and it's bad advice. So I'm like, you know, if you are only selling one item a week, don't be coming on here telling other people, you know, what you recommend because you're, it's not working for you. So don't like give other people bad advice and hurt their business. So I wanted to talk about some of that today. First of all, if you're a full-time seller, implement this stuff to the T. But if you are a part-time seller, I understand your time is limited on what you can do and just do the best that you can do um, with this information. So Poshmark has a few things in place, right? They have a few systems in place such as sharing, following, uh, sending offers. They have this stuff in place for a reason, okay? And you should take advantage of it because if you do that and take advantage of those things, you will see an increase in sales if you're not already using it. Uh, so first we're going to talk about sharing. So with sharing, I recommend you share as much as you can, okay? Yes, it has been said that if you share too much, um, your account can get, you know, you, you, you can be like in Poshmark jail or whatever, right? That can happen, but it takes a whole lot of sharing to get you to that point. And it's probably, you probably won't reach that amount to get you there. Okay, we share a lot and we've never been in Poshmark jail, ever. So don't worry about that, regardless of what you may hear out there. Um, share your items as much as you can. Now, I recommend you sharing throughout the day, you know, a few items, like do an item at a time, an item at a time like that. Like, just keep going. Some people do it in batches, okay? And that's fine if that's the way you have to do it. But if you can constantly share an item throughout the day, even if you share one item and you go ship a package and do a task and you come back and you share another item and then you go and do something, like, that's going to keep your items constantly on the feed. They're not going to move down. Um, so that's one recommendation, but if you can't do that and you, you need to share it in batches, I recommend you do it three times a day. You do it when you wake up in the morning because there is a lot of traffic on there before people, uh, when people wake up, the first thing they do is grab their phones. Some of them will get on Poshmark and they will shop a little bit. So that's a good time to do it. Also, another time is between 12 and 2. And the reason I picked that time is because a lot of people are on their lunch breaks at that time. And when they're on their lunch breaks, a lot of people get on their phones and they shop. Um, there's also parties going on around that time. So that's a good time. And then also the 7 o'clock party that happens at nighttime. And now I'm on Easter time, guys. But um, the 7 o'clock party is also a really good time. Uh, it's probably the most popular time to share. Um, there's always a party going on at that time, and you know, people are getting home from work, they're winding down, uh, they're getting finished with their dinner, and then they get on their phones. So that's probably one of the best times um, that you need to be on there sharing. But now, I have found also the 10 o'clock party is a great time also, because if you think about it, the West Coast is just waking up, not, not just waking up, they're just winding down for the day, right? <coughs> Excuse me. 
So their 10 o'clock is our 7 o'clock. Um, and there tends to be a lot of traffic on there at those times. Like at 10 o'clock, I'm getting sleepy, right? But I try to push and stay awake to um, hit those West Coast people um, with our, our product. Um, so if you can share during those times, that will benefit you a lot. And um, the sharing leads me into the following, okay? I've seen it discussed lately on some of the Poshmark forums on Facebook about whether or not it is important to build your following. And I'm going to tell you, I don't care what anyone says about that um, because people's rationale about it is people don't shop from the feed, they shop from the search. And I don't deny that at all. Like, I totally agree people shop uh, from search. I shop from search. You know, if there's a certain shoe I want, I may type that in and search for it or a certain brand, right? But, if you are selling boutique items, okay, the search is not as important because with boutique items, you know, they're not really branded and, you know, people, it's not like they can search for Nike or something like that if you're doing boutique. So, um, this is where, you know, they buy from the feed. And if you think about it, if you build your following up on Poshmark, Let's say you got 4,000 followers, right? You got a chance for 4,000 people to possibly see your item. But if you have 100,000 followers, that is a chance for 100,000 people to see your item. And regardless of what anyone thinks, regardless if people do shop from search, people do look through their feed. I look through my feed every day. And they may not be intending on buying a certain item that you have, but when they scroll and they see that item and how cute it is, you know, it may catch their eye and they'll be like, you know, I need that dress for summer. I need that top for this cruise I'm about to go on. Like, that's why it's important to um, share your items, build your following, so that you have stuff showing up on the feed to your buyers. Um, and, you know, people on these Poshmark Facebook groups, they will say, oh, people, you know, it's not important. I can tell you right now, it's not important because people shop from search. And then I go and look at their um, their Poshmark accounts, and, like, seriously, they have 4,000 followers. But it's like, of course you don't see the significance of building your following because you only have 4,000 people, and you have not had the opportunity to see how building your followers can increase your sales. So it's not to knock anybody that doesn't have a big following, like, you just have to work at building it. You need to take time every day to share your items. You need to take time every day to go in and follow people. Okay. Um, that is going to increase your sales tremendously if you do that. The number, well, I was going to say number one thing, but actually I don't know if it is the number one thing, okay, because all three of these things are super, super important. To me, they kind of all three go hand in hand. But the last thing I'm going to talk about is sending offers. Okay, um, you want to make sure you send an offer to like or right away to someone that likes your items. And the CEO of Poshmark managed, he said this in a blog. That was his advice that when you send an offer to someone right away, you have a bigger chance of selling your item. And the reason for this is because when someone goes in and they see your item and they like it, it's fresh on their mind. Like they're liking that item right then. And if they get an offer with a discount, they'll be like, oh, shoot, well, yeah, I'll go in and I'll buy this now. They discounted it. And you get the sale. But if you wait a week to send that offer, well, by then, they've kind of forgotten about that item that was so cute. And plus, they've seen many other items on Poshmark by then. And they probably purchased them from people that sent the offer right away. Their funds may be gone by the time you send your offer. So that's why it's important to go ahead when someone likes it as soon as you can and send the offer, snatch up that sale. And um, if you do that, you will see a big increase in your sales. Waiting around, like I've seen people on the Poshmark group say, well, I'm going to stop sending offers to likers because I, the way I look at it is if someone wants an item, they'll buy it. Yeah, that's true, maybe, but... You know, Poshmark, it may have been that way back in the day when Poshmark first started, but now Poshmark has changed. And people don't shop on Poshmark without receiving an offer now. 
Okay, when they like your item, they like it because they are expecting to receive the offer from you. So if you don't send it, you're missing out on a sale most likely. Um, and another thing that you could do is when a person likes an item, okay, it's going to show up in your notifications, right? They like an item. On the left side of that screen where their icon is for their face or whatever their picture is, Click on that, go to their site, and you click, there's a little, there's a little thing that you click on, um, on their site that it looks like their picture, their profile picture, and then it's got like a shopping bag. You want to click that, and um, then you change the little pull down menu to switch to sell view. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video on it on YouTube that you, we're about uh, building bundles. So you can look at that video for reference to see what I'm talking about. I walk you step through step uh, with screen sharing on that video. But anyway, um, when you do this, you're going into that person's bundle. You don't have to add items to a bundle for them if you're not comfortable with that. Um, but what you can do is there's a comment box on that page and you can just type a little message to them. And it's just like a personal conversation between you and that person. And usually I do this and I just put something like, you know, thank you for checking out our wholesale closet. Um, I wanted to let you know that we offer free shipping when you bundle two or more items together. And if you have any questions or if I could be of any assistance, please let me know. Um, thank you. And I leave that as a comment there for them. And what that does is it opens up the communication with the buyer and it lets them know what kind of discounts or specials you're willing to give them. And I can't tell you how many times when I do this, you know, I someone writes me back right away and they usually say, you know, thank you so much for that information. I appreciate it so much. And then they start adding items to a bundle and they purchase. Um, so, you know, on those Poshmark groups, some people have said, oh, I hate when people add items to a bundle for me. Oh, I don't create bundles because I feel like that's pushy. Well, I wouldn't say it's pushy, but what I would say is you have is proactive, and you have to be proactive to get sales. Like that's why car salesmen come out to you and they talk to you and they, um, you know, try to get you to buy the cars. Of course, yeah, that gets on our nerves, yeah. But that's what they do to close the deal. Um, so with Poshmark, you know, it's not. Um, you have to be proactive. Don't just sit back and wait on the buyers. Be proactive and go after your sales. Um, now, also, and another thing you could do with that is once you send them that message, if it doesn't kick them into gear to start adding bundles, um, you could go back in like a week later, later and add a comment there. And you could say, you know, I, I noticed that you checked out my wholesale closet last week, and I just want to let you know that we have some new inventory in. Or, you know, if you have any questions, then please let me know. It's just a way to communicate with your buyer. And sometimes that buyer, um, it will make them think, oh, yeah, I forgot about this seller, and I forgot about that cute top she had. Let me go back in and check this out. Um, another thing that I would suggest you do is get some kind of marketing material to send to your buyers in all of your packages. Um, that could be a business card. Um, you could get business cards made with Vista print. Um, they're very reasonably priced, and you can design them yourself. Um, and you, if you try hard enough, you can get a coupon code from somewhere to use to get you like 50% off the business card. You can also, now what we do, you can also is... Uh, Print out, like type up something on your computer and print it out and send to people. And that's what we do because we have so much information that we try to give our buyers. Um, on that information, I ask people to follow us on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, and, you know, I just tell them about different little specials or promotions or stuff that we're running. Um, the last thing that I'm, I'm going to say is some people are very against social media, right? And Poshmark is doing something new now called the affiliate program. And if you um, if you are a Poshmark ambassador or if you have enough followers on social media, you could be a part of the affiliate program. So people want to know, should they do it, right? And it's totally up to you. Like, if you have time to do it, yes. Um, if you're already on social media and that's something that you do already, why not? You know, they're going to pay you for your video if you do it. 
Um, but not only can it be a benefit in that way, but it can get you that much more exposure, right? You want to be known on Poshmark. You want people to know what you do. And that's why it's so important that you get on social media. Um, if you're hidden and not seen, it really decreases your chances of people buying your items, okay? You want to be out there. You don't want to be hidden. You want to be out there in front of people, let them know what you're doing, don't worry about looking like you're bragging or you're boasting or, you know, whatever. Like, just say, hey, you know, I've got this item listed in my Poshmark closet. Check it out. Um, you would be surprised at how many sales that will bring you. Because think about it. Some people, um, you may have them on Instagram. They may not be on Poshmark. Okay, and if you have 10,000 followers on Poshmark and you got 30,000 on Instagram, you know, you got 30,000 more people seeing your items in. So, um, it's important to just use all the platforms to get exposure. You want exposure if you want to build your business. Um, uh, one other thing that I wanted to discuss is lowball offers. I see this also on the groups where people complain about getting lowball offers. Okay, and I know it is super frustrating when you have an item for $50 and someone sees you offer for $15 on that item, right? $15 on a $50 item. Like, that's ridiculous, right? But, you know, it's all a part of the game and you shouldn't take it personal. A lot of times people are just trying to open up a means of communication with you and they want to see, like, where you stand with your pricing, what's the lowest you will come down. So they do that in hopes to get a counter offer from you I'm at the lowest that you're going to go. So my suggestion to you is not to close out making that transaction by declining the offer. Always counter back with whatever is the lowest that you will go on that item. And what I do a lot of times is I counter back and I send them a little message and I say, hey, at so-and-so, I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate your counter offer. This is the absolute lowest price that I can go on this item. You know, thank you so much. And that way, you know, you're sending the counter back. You didn't close off, you know, the sale. You're sending the counter back, but you're also letting them know, okay, you know, like this is the lowest I could go. So there's no need to send back a counter. Um, but that's, uh, you know, a lot of people get frustrated with it and they just decline the offer because they're so you know, uh, offended by it. <laughs> and, you know, you can't take it personal in business. Business is business. Everybody wants a deal. You can't take it personal. Now, I wanted to talk about opening a boutique because, you know, we sell wholesale items, so you guys are opening a boutique probably if you're buying from us. I've had several people ask me, um, can they mix thrifted items and boutique items together? And my answer to you is yes. There is no policy on Poshmark saying that you can't. And you can, it's your business, you can run it how you want to. You can list whatever items you want to as long as it's in, within, you know, Poshmark's compliance on uh, items. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of people that sell boutique items and they sell thrifted items. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's all about what works for you. Some people just do boutique items because they want a certain look for their um, Poshmark closet. But um, it's totally up to you. And then a lot of we get a lot of questions. People are have always sold thrifted items, and they they start a boutique. But then when they get the items, they're not sure how to actually list them as boutique. So um, I just wanted to run through that with you in case you you run across that problem. When you're listing, you're going to select new with tags on that part. When you select new with tags, there's going to be a um, a little thing that is popped up up there that says uh, boutique. You want to make sure that you click that switch and put boutique, and then you're good to go. Now, as far as pricing with the MSRP, you know, a lot of people are really, really concerned with MSRP when they buy wholesale clothing. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, when you buy from other wholesale companies, you don't get the MSRP, okay? You buy from them, and you list the items for what you want to sell them for. So, you know, this is something that a lot of people really bank on. But I'm telling you, you don't have to go with the MSRP, whatever it is. If you purchase an item, you can sell that item for more than what, you know, wholesalers say the MSRP is. You can sell it for less. 
it doesn't matter so don't put too much into that what i would do is if i'm buying merchandise i think okay what do i need to list this as to get the profit that i want from it and that's the price i put in nobody dictates to me what i price my items at and you shouldn't let people dictate to you either you know what you need for that item so you list it as such um and people want to know you know does boutiques work i'm here to tell you that boutiques do work that's how we started we owned a boutique um we always sell sold new items and I would give you an example, like someone that you could check out on Poshmark if you don't know who she is. Her name is Vanessa, but she, her um, closet name is Madame Couture. And you may have seen her on the Poshmark commercial. She is the blonde with the long hair. Um, her name is Vanessa, but her and her husband are a team. Uh, they have a family business. They do boutique, and they have a very successful boutique on Poshmark. So, um, she is just a small example of how boutique can be successful. There's many others, but um, she is one that sticks out of my head because she is on the Poshmark commercials. Um, if you want to check her out, that's just a little example of what you could inspire to be. Um, so, that's all the tips that I have for you guys today. Um, I hope this helps in some way. I hope that it will help you move your inventory and grow your businesses. Um, if you do those things that I recommended, I promise you, you will see an increase in sales. Um, and I know from personal experience because I've been where you are and I implemented that stuff and my business grew from it. <clears throat> I don't think there's ever been a day in the past year that we've been on Poshmark where we didn't have sales. I mean, we have had sales every single day. And, you know, a lot of people... They post that they may get two or three sales a week, and that's fine if you're happy with that. Um, but if you do want more sales, you want to grow, implement these strategies, and you will see a big difference. Okay, guys, so I want to thank you guys for watching the video today. I hope you guys are having much, much success on Poshmark selling our items. We so appreciate your business, guys. We do get new inventory in every week. We were getting in once a week, and now we have gone up to three times a week. Um, and we are looking at trying to get new inventory in for you guys every single day. So stay tuned. Keep checking us out, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.